Hi students, so today we are going to start lecture 25 and this is about circulation theory of lift and the Kuta condition. So this particular theory is very important as far as lift prediction is concerned. It's coming from potential flow theory, incompressible flow and so on. We are going to touch on some brief aspects about it. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now before we start the lecture today we need to introduce what is circulation so circulation is typically given by this greek letter gamma and if we take an airfoil section here then we consider a closed curve c around it which i have shown in green and there is a flow which is taking place around this airfoil section now let us take a certain point and take a tangent to the curve at that point then we would have a velocity for example going like this which i have shown in the blue line and the angle between the tangent to the curve c and the velocity is given by theta and let's take a very small increment of distance ds along this closed curve so now we can define circulation as the closed integral around this curve c v cos theta into ds so this is the mathematical definition of circulation and in many cases if you have amenable closed curves you can actually calculate the circulation around a given system now circulation can be calculated using potential flow theory and if you take a course in aerodynamics you are going to study this in more detail this is all related to for example complex numbers and so on and what you get from that theory is something known as the kuta jukowski theorem which gives you the lift per unit span as rho v into gamma so this is a very nice and compact theorem which comes out of complex number theory so it's basically telling you the lift is simply the density into the velocity of the body into the circulation so to understand it physically, we are going to look at what actually happens in a flow around the airfoil. So if we have a typical flow around the airfoil, which is taking place such as shown here. Now here we of course are going to look at attached inviscid flow. Then this flow can be thought about as having two components. It's essentially a summation of a pure uniform flow and a pure circulation. So if we were going to add these two together, then we would get a flow like this around the airfoil section. Now before we move forward let us just give a basic proof about the kuta jukowski theorem. Now like I mentioned before there is a proof based on complex number theory which you can find in aerodynamics book. What I am giving today here is an intuitive or a heuristic proof. So let us consider an airfoil section and let's say on one side the velocity is v the second side the velocity is v plus v which is a small v component and on one side the pressure is p and the second side the pressure is p plus delta p so again this is very typical of an airfoil section is that the velocity is typically higher on the upper surface and lower on the lower surface so we are going to apply Bernoulli's equation between top and bottom but before that let us take a look at what is the circulation so circulation gamma from our previous definition itself using the closed integral would be the velocity on this side of the airfoil, the upper side of the airfoil into the chord length. So that's the distance minus velocity at the lower side of the airfoil into the chord length. So here I'm essentially presuming this airfoil is like a flat plate in which case this would be exactly correct because then C would be the length here so essentially then i can get gamma is v plus v into c minus vc is small v into c now let's apply bernoulli's equation between the top and bottom of this airfoil so we can write p plus half rho v plus small v square equals p plus delta p plus half rho capital v square so this is the top and bottom part the two sides here of course no energy is being put in we can use this equation and we are of course considering that this whole velocity pressure system is outside the boundary layer is just outside the boundary layer so we can use inviscid flow theory here 
Now we simplify this equation here. The P cancels out here. I expand this V plus small v component here like this. And on this side, I again have delta P plus half rho V square. Now I expand this out so that I can write the equation for delta P. So delta P becomes rho small v capital V plus half rho V square. And you can see here that I could neglect this second term because small v is likely to be a very small value and therefore the square of this could be neglected and so I can say delta p is rho small v into capital V. Now what would be the lift? I can say the lift would be the length of the chord into delta p and so if I was to do that essentially do remember that the lift is per unit span so essentially I am assuming a span of 1 so you can only consider chord here that will be okay. Then I can write this delta P here as rho V V that I get this equation here and then I use the fact that circulation itself was given by small v into C. So small v into C can be written as gamma which is the circulation. So I get the kuta jukowski theorem here L is rho V gamma. Now this is of course a very simplistic proof and if you are interested in a more complex and authentic proof of this subject then you can look at many of the books and videos which may be out there on aerodynamics itself and this is a great illustration of complex number theory. So sometime people think in high school and college as to why they study complex numbers where it is used and one of the places where you can see its very beautiful use is in the kuta jukowski theorem. And it's something which comes out in a very elegant manner mathematically. And the solution looks very simple, but it has been verified by various experiments. So the very simple formula L is rho V gamma has been verified quite extensively for inviscid flow. Now let us turn to the Kuta condition. The Kuta condition states that the flow on the airfoil leaves the trailing edge smoothly. So you see that whenever we draw an airfoil section and we draw the different streamlines which are passing on top and bottom of this airfoil, we always draw a particular streamline like this and then we draw a particular streamline like this which is leaving the trailing edge smoothly. Now this is not just a casual thing which we do, this is a fact which takes place in actual flow and this is also something which is known as the Kuta condition which means that the flow over the airfoil will leave the trailing edge smoothly and Kuta condition is essentially used to calculate the amount of circulation which is going to be there in this particular system and also in many applications such as in computational fluid dynamics you actually enforce the Kuta condition as a mathematical condition to get the right amount of circulation and therefore to calculate lift properly. So to summarize today's lecture we can say that kuta jukowski theorem is very important. It can be actually used to calculate circulation for example from wind tunnel experiment. So if you have an experiment in the wind tunnel you are able to measure the lift. You know the density of air and the velocity of air you are able to calculate the circulation about that particular airfoil. Now the amount of circulation is precisely what needs to be added to the uniform flow so that streamline will leave the trading edge of the airfoil smoothly. So this is essentially the written statement of the Kuta condition and what this means is that there is going to be a particular streamline which is going to leave this trailing edge smoothly. So let's again recapitulate what is the circulation theory of lift. The circulation theory of lift says that the amount of circulation gamma is precisely what must be added to uniform flow so that Kuta condition is satisfied. So now we know that if we have a pure uniform flow, we have to add a certain amount of circulation to this flow so that the flow will leave the trailing edge in a manner such that the Kuta condition is satisfied and that's going to give you the correct value of circulation here with which you can calculate the lift which acts on this particular airfoil section by using the kuta jukowski theorem. So this was my lecture on this important topic of circulation today. This is a pretty intense topic and a very deep one 
So if you are interested in more details, look at any of the aerodynamics books out there on incompressible flow theory, potential flow theory, etc. And you will find a nice proof about it in terms of complex numbers. Of course, if you are not familiar with complex numbers, you will need to review that subject before you understand the origin and genesis of the Buta Joukowsky theorem. So I'll end this video here and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.